Everybody <laughs> to the show, a very special super fun. Again, 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 it's a very special, but I'm going to take this shit out after a while. Bro, bro, you always have to take it out. I know, I know, man. I'm why, to... why do you do this? I don't know, man, because it, it, it looks good, but it's not very practical. <laughs> you could have just brushed them. No. <laughs> well, we know that's not happening. <laughs> you brush your teeth? No, I didn't. No, oh, people, hold on. Go watch him inhale a little bit and oh. die on air. No, I got Alzheimer's. <laughs> and, and, and just in case. My grill fell out. I brought some extra. <laughs> you should have just put it on the whole top, man. It'll stay in better. So I'm going to go ahead and not try to keep y'all waiting because y'all <coughs> have been waiting on this for a while. Because, you know, ever since Don't. July of two years ago, I've been waiting on it. Now, this is for all the people out there. If you're just tuning in and you're looking like, man, that costume ain't complete. Where that grill at? I tried. All right, I got tinfoil. Mm. Even brought it with me just in case. Martin I knew it was going to fall out. Martin freak out. Mm-hmm. Looking uh-huh. at you put this shit Martin don't like to see me chew yeah, 10 full. Uh, all right. Mmm, Martin. Mmm, Martin. Mmm, this is delicious. You want to try it? <laughs> <laughs> but I did. I, I did get the whole costume. The problem is when I try to talk. Like, like I, you know, because if, like, for example, I'm going to get this movie, fuck you, I'm going to fuck you, and this shit going to come out like this. Some of bullshit. Some of bullshit. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> Mojo, no. <laughs> Mojo, be, you're going to be <laughs> shitting silver turds tonight. <laughs> Me is like, we hit the lotto, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Let's feed him gold. Next, <laughs> but I have been singing the praises of this. And I'm not gonna deny it. I said, Man, this is gonna be the movie. Fuck Batman and Superman. Mm-hmm. That squad, yep, them villains gonna mm-hmm. come in here and change the whole game, man. Yeah, and I but- said, Corey, why are you saying this? You don't even read Suicide Squad, you know nothing about them. I don't do that nerd shit. I watch movies, man. You know, I don't need to read no comic book. Man, you know, they always change things anyway. I find that everything I need to know about comics through my movies, man. I don't need to read, look at pictures and shit. I and- said, Corey. Deadpool is the last word in anti-heroes. How's this gonna measure up to that? And I said, Martin, I don't give a shit. But you know <laughs> <laughs> But the word has come out. The movie has not been getting good reviews. And I and you know, I, I and I still I'm and, I, and here's the other thing too, I'm not gonna lie. All week I've been clicking. This is how much I've been looking forward to this movie. I've been clicking on the internet, just seeing if somebody would sneak a review out there. Mm-hmm. I want to find out about this movie so bad. Cause I yeah, I don't I don't know the Suicide Squad that well. But I know some of these villains, and I know that DC needs a big hit, and I know that they're looking for this to be the one that's so different from everything that they've done that I admire that enough that I want to succeed. I love the concept. You know, we got this hard-ass woman, Amanda Waller, played by Viola Davis. You know, she'll do anything to keep her country protected, including getting together a program called, what's it called? The Task, <coughs> Task, Task Force, Force X. Task Force X. What is that? That's where they got a bunch of villains. Not just regular villains, meta-humans. You know, they got special powers and abilities. And they're the most dangerous people in the world because of that. And she says, you know what, but when a big crisis happens, like let's say, you know, a, you know, a Superman comes down that ain't so nice. Kind of an asshole Superman. Mm-hmm. What are we going to do then? What are we going to what we going to do then? Look at she got black on everybody. What are we going to do now? <laughs> what you going to do now? <laughs> what you going to do now? I uh-huh, done told you. And she said that's where we got to fight powers with powers. Mm-hmm. And she gets this team together to go in and try to solve a huge crisis that's taken over a city. And it's not just a regular crisis, not just a regular hostage situation. This time, something magical is going down. And this looks like a job for the Suicide Squad. Now, said no one. Said said I. (laughs) And apparently other books. They've been saying this shit since 1959. Talk about, I don't know nothing about Suicide Squad. Well, thanks to Wikipedia. I'm about to say, these Wikipedia facts coming out right now. (laughs) Thanks to old, my my old friend Wiki. (laughs) You know, I found out a little something about the Suicide Squad. Then they do run deep. I didn't know this. I mean, that's how much I love this movie. I said, I got to know everything about the Suicide Squad. 
And I might be wrong here, and I'm sure that my, my nerdy friend will correct me if that's the case. But I believe that the Suicide Squad goes all the way back to 1959, where they were in the, the, uh, the first issue of the, the Brave and the Bold, issue number 25. And that's when they had the character, you know, they got the, the only human of the Suicide Squad, uh, Cap- uh, no, Colonel Flag. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that back then, he wasn't hanging out with villains. He was just hanging out with his girlfriend, fighting monsters and right. dinosaurs and shit. Colonel Rick Flag. Colonel Rick Flag. And, you know, he did his thing. And then threats became so big that that's when they had to bring the supervillains in. And that didn't happen until 1987 in DC's Legends, number three. And it was a cool concept, too, because I learned that this is the, that, that is why you, the, the heroes are never in, I mean, I'm sorry, the villains, why they're never in jail, why they always escape, because Amanda Waller is always coming in and fucking up the program. She's always letting them, you know, get an early release if they go and do some shit for her. She uses bell rev like a revolving door. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, exactly. Now, here's a, I, I, I'll tell you, it is silly. I know that. Uh, th- y'all, let that dog just, y'all let that dog just walk Mojo on that. Didn't nobody hallway. say a fucking word. That dog, <laughs> that dog just. <laughs> Mojo's like, excuse me, I'm leaving for a moment. <laughs> God damn, y'all a bunch of villains. Let my dog go out there to get killed and shit. Let him. He yeah. did that on his own. <laughs> yeah. Out of all the heroes in this room, nobody saved my dog from walking out this door. <laughs> now, <laughs> and there he goes again. No, no, let him no, walk out again. Mojo, come in, man. It brings in the best elements of the of of the uh, of the heist film of the mission movie, where they bring in all these different personalities to do something that's bigger and more dangerous than them. Mm-hmm. And it's also about how all these different personalities. And all these people with different skill sets are going to clash. You're right. Dirty Dozen all the way down to, you know, you got classics like the Dirty Dozen all the way down to something like B-movies, Escape from New York. Sure. Yeah. And where, where, does, the, where does the silliness come in? Well, it's, they're trying to put this in, you know, D.C. They're trying to make things as grounded as they can. You got the military telling these guys, hey, look, we just got you out of jail. Everybody get your gear and suit up. And so you got one girl who's got a package full of clown suits and, mm-hmm. and, a, and a crocodile man who's putting on a hoodie and shit. You know, it's – but the thing that keeps it cool is that – and, and uh, this guy's been getting a lot of slack from people. Joel Kinnaman right there. The mm-hmm. act, Ro- RoboCop. RoboCop. But he's the – like I said, he's the, uh, the good guy and the only real kind of human in the group or the guy that's not fucked up. With him mm. in there and, the, and, and then he's the one that kind of keeps these things sort of, uh, as I said, grounded and not – too silly and plus once these people start coming together things move fast and you just i I don't know about y'all but i just kind of go with it this is the deal you're going somewhere very bad to do something that'll get you killed but until that happens you're my problem so was that like a, a pep talk yeah it was pep talk you grab what you need for a fight we're wheels up in 10. You might want to work on your team motivation thing. You heard of Phil Jackson? Yeah. He's like the gold standard. Okay? Triangle, bitch. Oh, here we go with these big Willyisms. <laughs> that's Will Smith. That's Deadshot. <laughs> Will Smith playing Deadshot, playing Will Smith. Mm-hmm. See, that's the thing about it. You know, I, I thought when they brought Will Smith in, especially after that line, you know, bitch. You know, you know, big. We get Will Smith sometimes, then we get Big Black Willie. <laughs> you know, big big Willie style. You know, that's where we he comes in and he has to add an extra layer of blackness to every character he plays. Yeah. <laughs> but I I gotta say, as it went on, as he became the character of Deadshot, when he came in, I was a little worried about him, but he's one of the best parts of the movie. I mean, not only does he add a humanity to his character because his character has a daughter? I a lot of people complain about this. Oh, I don't, you know, he has a daughter. He's supposed to be a villain. He's softening him up. But that's the thing that makes him more of a complex character is that he is a villain. He kills people. But he tries to have what little humanity that he can with his daughter. And he might even be a decent guy, but he can't have it. Mm-hmm. Um, he might be a decent guy, but he kills people. But, he, but that's the <laughs> thing about it. You can tell like he's not truly, truly evil. He wants to turn a new leaf. He wants to take care of his daughter, but he'll never be able to have that. And it's cool seeing Will Smith play that role, to pl- actually come out and play a villain. Pleasure doing business with you, Angie. 
I went, oh shit, the Fresh Prince actually shot somebody. I didn't think they were going to go through with it, man. I was like, well, like, he shot a rat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, he shot a person. Yeah, I mean, we ain't spoiling nothing. He's the world's most deadly assassin. You can't have him be in no movie unless he takes somebody out. Oh, yeah, a couple people. Co- yeah, yeah. I mean, and I was like, oh shit, they actually let Will Smith do some villainous shit right here. The cool thing was with that is that all these people, well, most of them, they get these cool intros too. And his is one of the cooler ones that we see. You know, David Ayer, who directed this, who uh, wrote one of my favorite movies, Training Day. Mm-hmm. And also, you know, every every movie that he directs got to have some street in it. And that's one of my problems with the movie, especially with these introductions of these characters. He's playing random rap music, some pop music. Sometimes he's playing old tunes. But you heard about the reshoots, people. I don't want to buy it. I don't want to believe it. But when they play these random songs that just the movie just whips it out his ass. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, especially with that one, you're like, oh, this is a serious scene. Like, if they would have added some, you know, like, I'm not going to say you should do a Hans Zimmer score behind this, but some, like, maybe some orchestral stuff and some horns behind you. But, all right, this is a tense scene, but this is just like, all right, we're joking around. Let me shoot somebody real well, quick. Well, I, I think the purpose of that is to keep him, like, a light, funny character so you always like him mm-hmm. and you don't focus on the fact that he's an assassin, that he kills people for money. But I let that slide. I did. Uh, you know, I, I said, all right, it's, it's, it's working for me because, again, everybody's kind of taking their job seriously. It is kind of funny, and it's fun, and it's moving at a fast pace. And there were some things in here that I was actually confused about. Everybody had been talking about, oh, ever since Superman came down, shit just went off. Mm-hmm. Your things ain't the same. He don't, he don't open the door on crazy. And then all of a sudden, we start hearing about all these Meta humans and magic people. Cara Delevingne, uh, is that her name? Yeah, Delevingne. Yeah. She she plays she plays a pro, a, a professor or, or uh, a, a, a archaeologist. archaeologist in the mm-hmm. movie. But she's also she went to the wrong temple and, and opened up some, and now she <laughs> now she possessed by the enchantress. And I'm thinking, well, if Superman, if y'all knew all this shit and all you knew about people being possessed and people can run at light speed and what, why is this all of a sudden, you know, a big deal? You know, that Superman came down. Mm-hmm. Especially when, before Superman, these people with these powers have had them long enough for other people to come in and control it. Which I have to say, when I'm, when I'm talking about control, the only reason why I bought it is because of Viola Davis in the movie. As, uh, as uh, Amanda, Waller. Ama- Amanda Waller. That's a bad bitch, man. Oh, yeah. In the movie... She's the one that has a control over everything. She don't fuck with anybody. If you messing up, she going to take your ass out. Whenever somebody does some magic shit in the room, she don't flinch, man. <laughs> I know everybody else is gasping. And she's like, okay, next. <laughs> she's like, no, I got this shit. You know, with her in the movie, that's the only reason why I let it slide. Because, hey, if she says, yeah, there's people with magic powers and they get possessed by enchantresses, I'm like, okay, if you say it, whatever. Enchantress. <laughs> and they always got that Mexican person. Those meals. Why do you Racist. Yeah. Santa Maria. You know, yeah. <laughs> With that buttered toast. Oh, no, it's yeah. upside down. <laughs> yeah. You, I mean, that is kind of, you know, that is sort of stereotypical. Well, I mean, I guess they didn't have her sacrifice the chicken. So. Yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> you know they cut out the scene where she had a mop in her hand to make sure. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> the Enchantress is a sorry-ass villain, man. She sucks. She's, I mean, I don't know, I don't know what other way to tell you. She's fucked up, man. She, there's nothing to her. All she does is sit up there and fuck with people and stare at people. And when she does finally gain her powers, all she does is uh, throw tar all around the place with her, with her, uh, her brother, who is a, a CG effect from the fucking mummy no, from the nineties. No, from Gods of Egypt. That's what, uh, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That's my whole thing. Like, why do you hire the, the the Dirty Dozen to fight the Gods of Egypt? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I was thinking that the whole time. I was like, wait, you want to have them fight a credible like terrorist threat, not something with, that with powers that are completely out of Superman. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's some shit you call Superman for. Yeah, you don't call Boomerang, Captain Boomerang. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. man. Yeah. All I do is throw Boomerang. Yeah. I'm gonna fight a <laughs> all I do. You don't call Crocodile Man. <laughs> <laughs> that's some that's some heavy duty shit right there. And uh, in the the special effects for she's okay. Look, I say she's all right. I, that's an impressive effect. Dude, with that her. hand effect, I love that one. That, oh, yeah, that, was, that was really cool. It was cool. Yeah. I will say I liked the effect on her. It was it, it was a kind of a badass effect. But there's nothing to her character. And her brother is a bad special effect. But 
that's okay because it's not the whole time about her. It's about the squad. And as long as they kind of keep it on the squad, I'm good with that. I'm having fun with it. But the only thing is, I mean, it's cool with hanging out with the squad when, they, when they're not constantly reminding you that they're the bad guys. Mm -hmm. They say that shit about ten times in the movie. We know the shit is called Suicide Squad. Worst part of it is they're going to blame us for the whole thing. And they can't have people knowing the truth. We're the patsies, the cover-up. Don't forget, we're the bad You're guys. the bad guys, yeah, yeah. You said this shit 20 <laughs> times earlier in the movie, man. We got it. Well, just in case you missed it. <laughs> just yeah. in case you didn't. For those you, there's a lot of joking back and forth, so maybe you forgot about that. Oh, I know. For those of you just walked in late, you know, we, he even looks at the screen, we the bad guys, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so many people seem to really put all their effort into the first two acts. And just figure the third act will work itself out. Yeah, and it doesn't. <laughs> <That's me. laughs> man, I was man, I was hoping, man. Was <laughs> Everybody was. Like, all right, you're, you're doing great. Then the third act comes along. You're like, all right, cool. I guess. Um, all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Let me tell y'all something. Y'all want to sit up here and talk about me? You want to say I sit up here and uh, kiss Marvel ass? I don't ever give DC a chance. I I don't give a fuck. I just want a good movie. And I was getting a decent film for about 75% of it. But when they had to come in and they had to start fighting the Enchantress, her powers suck. All she, do, all she does is bring people to her, put her hand on her head, and turn them into bubble-headed zombies. Yeah. This shit turns into every action scene here, it turns into a zombie flick. Yeah. I mean, the action is mon it's a, it is a mundane Zombie flick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's that's not a single bit of action where you go like, oh, that was cool. Yeah, no. and the reason why it sucks is because, well, there's a suicide, the Suicide Squad, a team full of some of the most wretched murderers in the world. But this is PG-13, so we can't have them kill humans. Yeah, this is like one of the you things, know. like, well, we can't have them kill humans with the robots or zombies. Or with something those zombies like in there. Yeah. Or even though everybody around them has been taken off, taken out by the Joker, you know, every extra is dying around and nobody gives a fuck about them. But the, the Suicide Squad, no, they got to kill zombies, man. We can't have them killing real people. Because at the end of the movie, you still have to like them. Because yeah. you still have to like them. The movie, I hate to say it, start falling off of it by that point. And I know what y'all are saying right now. Y'all are saying, look, man, well, you ain't talked about my boy yet. Corey, you look just like him. Don't, don't tell me you forgot. My man, the Joker, he came in and saved this shit. I know he did. Don't you ever bet against the Joker. Mm -hmm. yeah. That motherfucker going to win. I don't know how you feel about the Joker. Well, let me just say this. I was that now. I, one of the things, even though I was dick riding this movie for two years, one of the things I did say, I said, you know what? When the, when the Joker showed up, I said I ain't with this. Uh, I ain't with this cholo shit. You know, this got this grill and these face tattoos and this prison shit that goes on. You know, he's part of a goddamn Mexican gang and shit. Mm -hmm. I wasn't with it, man. I was not with it at all. And then they start releasing some more pictures, and I said, you know what? And you even told me, Martin. He said, hey, look, man, they trying to do something different. So you gotta, you know, you need to raise up and see what's going on when you see him in the movie. I step back, Martin. I step back, brother. I step back. After five times flip flop. <laughs> yeah. I, I love know. this. I, I hate know. this. Yeah. I love this. I, I hate this. I know. I'll put a foot in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like a scene in Chinatown. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> He's the Joker. He's not the Joker. He's the Joker. He's not the Joker. <laughs> but but I, I, one of the things I did. <laughs> shit is serious, man. But <laughs> one of the things I did, st I, I sat back and I said, I appreciate that they tried to do something different with the Joker. Different, yet going back to some old roots. Martin, you you are the uh, you're the man right here. You tell me, like that old Joker, he was gangster, like he wasn't sure. he wasn't real crazy. Yeah, no, no, the original Joker, he was just more of a mass murderer who had a, a garish look about himself. And then I remember the, there was a point though where he was just kind of a bank robber, kind of like yeah, a gangster. Yeah, right? it was that silver age when it was all about like the comics code had come come in and they were like, hey, we can't have people murdering people so much. Yeah, so he just became a bank robber and a prankster. Yeah, so I like the way they've taken the elements of. That crazy ass murderous Joker, mm -hmm. and then the innocent bank robber Joker. They made him a gangster, and I went ahead and I said, "Hey, that's cool. Y'all, I admire that. Go ahead and, uh, and 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 do something different. We can't do this this Heath Ledger shit forever." Uh, and the tattoos and stuff, I didn't even mind that. Once I saw him moving and talking, I was like, "All right, you know, since he's gangster and shit, I can accept the tattoos." And he did have an element of crazy to him. And I liked the development they had with Harley Quinn in the beginning. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna kill me, Mr. J? What? Oh, I'm not gonna kill you. 
I'm just gonna hurt you really, really bad. And I was like, no, he's still a juggalo. That <laughs> Every time he came on screen, I felt like I was at an insane clown posse hey, keep concert, in mind, man. People, we did not edit that. That's the way it looks in the movie where it's like pink, green oh, shit oh. and you have quick edits and cuts. It looks like that in the, in the film. It, it, that's my problem with the Joker. Y'all trying too hard to make him crazy. The Joker just has to do some chaotic shit. We don't need pink and blue colors and quick edits to know that he's crazy and start like you know uh, f- uh looking at him flipping out and shit because of after effects on there <laughs> you know, fuck this is coming in here <laughs> like it hurt to wear man <laughs> that man <laughs> have a seat bitch <laughs> stab me with my cream smearing my shit smearing my shit oh I'm gonna let you talk in a little bit, man. Hey, can you move your neck without moving your shoulders? <laughs> I know he's, he's at he's at 1989, Batman. Michael Keaton. Where am I? <laughs> Where's the camera? Where is it? <laughs> but my, no, the review's going very well until your dumb ass walked in. No. Let, me, let me go ahead and make some room for you there. Yeah, it's not like you can see in that mask. <laughs> now here's night. Who's really dark? <laughs> uh, together again, <laughs> dumb asses together again. Now I the the whole thing with the Joker is that they Heath I mean no, Heath Ledger oh hell no not Heath Ledger Jared Jared Leto man great actor loved him in uh in and I mean a lot of things uh, uh sure. especially uh, recently Dallas Buyers Club, Dallas mm-hmm. Buyers Club which was, I, I I was thinking he's gonna make a great Joker but he ain't got it down as far as I'm concerned I can't really make a complete judgment because he's hardly in the movie. He's in there in these little spurts, giving a little bit of backstory for Harley Quinn. But really, when it comes down to his his character, he's mugging, man. They crowbarred him so hard into this movie. If you were if you were to take him out of the movie, when it changes in any kind of way, like I honestly feel that way. Like he didn't provide anything necessary to to the whole overall arching plot of the film. Well. You know, it's a it's a good day for Heath Ledger because wherever he is, he can go like, "Yep, still the king, still yeah. I, I'm still number one." Oh yeah, yeah. No, that's a, that's. A, it's not about Heath Ledger. I'm not trying to hold Jared Leto up to it. It's just that we don't see enough of him to make to make a judgment, except for every time he's on, he really draws everything out and just milks the scene for what it's worth. You know, and it's well, like it's well, like you watch him. He's like, "Yeah, you're a psychotic dude, but you're not the Joker." Here's the other thing. The Suicide Squad, like I said, I'm cool with them, but y'all got some useless fucking people on y'all's team, man. There's some people who don't need to be there at all. Let me see if I can find my man right here that I want to that I want to bring. There he is. <laughs> I don't know why this dude is even here, Captain Boomerang. Oh, uh, Martin's favorite actor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Ca- Captain Boomerang, who has the ability to throw cool ass boomerangs. That's his own. You were there. You had one fucking job. <laughs> To come there and throw cool ass boomerangs at people, kill them in a cool ass way with those boomerangs, and call it a fucking day. He throws two boomerangs <laughs> to this whole fucking film, and he can't even get that shit right. One boomerang, he just don't hit shit. He just catches it. The mm. other one don't even come back. You know? Bye. <laughs> yeah. The other one just, it was already the bad point of the movie. That, that motherfucker's like, oh! <laughs> and we wonder why Tom Hardy was like, nah, I'll pass. Yeah, yeah Tom Hardy got lucky. He yeah. said, I wonder because he said, yeah, I had other obligations. No, <laughs> man, you read that script. And you knew. You like, knew. <laughs> like saving my career. <laughs> yeah, brother, you knew. There are people there just so they could call it a squad. <laughs> you know? Basically. And there's somebody that's only not even there that long. <laughs> well, <it's, laughs> yeah, yeah, some people just did to be expendable, man. You know, oh, that's that was a travesty. Uh, <laughs> that was hilarious. I, I mean, like you know, yeah, you get one person in the squad. They don't give them no intro other than like off screen. Somebody mentions like, oh yeah, this is this guy, only to watch them like leave very soon. Yeah, uh, yeah. it's weird because this is a movie that where it's like they don't have that many people in the squad, and yes, and yet it's too many characters. They don't know how to how to deal with them all, how to make them all feel real or, get, or give them enough to, to do so you care about them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it's they would have been better off just saying, like, look, this movie is about Deadshot and other people. And it just and you put the focus on between Deadshot and, and uh, Rick Flagg, and then you got something going, just, just, just to pare it down. But as it is, it's just like for the two hours you're there – you don't really care about anybody. I mean, honestly, for me, like every time I watched the trailer, I, I kept thinking three things, and it was that one, I don't see any, anything action-wise or humor-wise that impressed me. <laughs> Two, Jared Leto never came across to me as a Joker, uh, and every time I said that, Corey, he was shouting me down. I was like, man, I'm telling you, he's just not. 
the joke. Man, you were yelling at me when I was getting mad about it, so I don't want to hear you no more jumping on me. So I just let it slide. Uh, but but my other thing was that I was like, you know what? As much as Margot Robbie looks like Harley Quinn, she's not really pulling it off. Her Long Island accent goes in and out. She uh, cried I, way too hard. I disagree. Yeah, yeah I, I, I dug her, man. Yeah. I, 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 didn't, I didn't like her I, interactions with the Joker because it just seemed really crowbarred in. But mm-hmm. like when she had a when they did her intro and when she had solo time and she was actually working with the squad, it seemed like all right. She she's kind of capturing she's not 100 percent getting the batman animated series one but she's doing a kind of a mirror mirror parody of well but but she like she wasn't she didn't seem crazy enough or even like uh, efficient enough like i was just so like i don't really see why she's on this team other than she knows how to shoot a gun Mm -hmm. but she's she's not anybody formidable it's and plus she's she's crazy enough to be more of a liability than anybody you could even see as as like yeah we need you here you she I, i never felt like she was pulling her weight like she was trying, but trying too hard, not really nailing the character. She had no special abilities. Yeah, there was literally no. I mean, most of them either. didn't have special abilities. Like, like, like the idea of putting them in that situation. I was like, w- why them? You could just get some people who, uh, some special forces guys who know how to shoot guns for most of this. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Because I got, I, I, I really gotta, I really gotta go off on something here. So, I mean. It, Okay. Whatever y'all need to say, go ahead and say it. Cause I'm 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 frustrated as hell, man. You frustrated? I'm I'm frustrated. I'm, All right. Uh, you know, I mean, go ahead. I ain't rushing anybody. No, no, no. I'm gonna, no. Say, um, I'm to gonna say. say. I mean, I agree with a lot of the points you guys made. Um, I think the reason when people Will Smith obviously is getting the best praise from this movie sure. is because, like, you're right. There should have been just Deadshot with friends coming out to do stuff because. Will Smith had what? This is a two-hour movie. He probably had forty-five minutes of like actual time where it was just him and his backstory. It's, it, I tell you, the best people to me, and you would disagree. It's it is Will Smith's movie, uh, Viola Davis's movie, Amanda mm-hmm. Waller, and I even think to a certain extent Harley Quinn. I was, uh, yeah, I was gonna say Will Smith, Viola Davis, um, Harley Quinn, and then I. I mean, for what RoboCop, he he not great, but he was at least trying. He was trying. Yeah, I mean, there was a point where early on, I was like, all right, he's 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 kind of in the mix You're here. About, uh, what's his name? Joe Joe, 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 yeah, yeah, but the longer he went on, I was like. Man, this dude just don't have it. He's not a movie star. Yeah, and then everybody else is just auxiliary. With this movie, it really felt just unnecessary for the most part. Um, mm. You you really appreciate the stuff with the uh, when when you know Batman does show up for a couple of seconds, which is again the same stuff we said about uh, Batman v Superman. Batman was the best part of this film. Yeah. Um, with all these extra characters, and Martin was right. It just feels like you have all these people, and if y'all probably would have done again. Sorry to bring this up with Marvel. Like you give us enough time to build a build character arcs, build some kind of relationship with these people, so you care about them if they do die or or if they're you know having a triumphant moment. Uh, the end of this movie is basically the trailer for Gods of Egypt. This made Batman v Superman look better to me. I'll give it that, and that's it's sad. This movie's a somewhat bullshit to me. Oh, <laughs> oh, well, oh, damn. Okay. okay. Right. <laughs> I wasn't prepared for that. I was sitting next to you. I thought for sure you were you were liking it more than oh, I was. No, I was laughing because it was bad, not because I was enjoying okay. it. Yo, you you actually was just silent. I was like, wow, he's he's really into no, I could it. Tell you, he, was, he was not liking that shit. No, I was not a fan. When I see that Corey silhouette do this shit, that's what I'm <laughs> <laughs> I, I I feel like the like what thirty six percent is getting on Rotten Tomatoes is a bit harsh. Thirty two now. Thirty two. Damn, okay. go, even going lower. I, I didn't, like in Batman vs. Superman, there were just times when I was angry. And I never felt angry in this. I just mostly felt nothing. I felt like, like even at the, its best, it was mediocre. I can't name anything in it I was impressed by or, or thought, well, that was cool. It was just, it was almost like watching a really expensive cosplay, I mean, a, a fan film. Uh, go on except for you know you had Will Smith it's like one of those times where I go like man Will Smith was the best part and you should have focused more on Will Smith I never say that but but yeah that was that was he he tried to make the most even when he was improv it was he was making the most of what little was there um there's so many missteps and the first two-thirds of it I think you can get through and go like well it ain't that bad it's just whatever I'm never gonna watch it again but when you get to the third act, it falls completely apart. It just gets silly. It's a big special effects show that you don't care about. And the thing, the biggest thing for me with it was like, it's a bunch of bad ideas, like just plot wise, what they're putting together. And they never sell you on it. They never sell you, at least they never sold me on why it was necessary to have this team or what they were supposed to do. And even the threat they go against, it's one that they create themselves. So what, what was the point in doing it in the first place? Anyway, that's all for me to say. I give it a round. Yeah. Here's the thing with this film right here, man. Like I said, I was enjoying about 75% are the first two-thirds of the film, if you will. And y'all had it. 
<laughs> Y'all, mm. you, you mm. fucking had it. The dude was in the end zone open. Mm. You were fucking <laughs> almost at the finish line, and you fell right on your ass. That I can tell you right now, people are giving this movie the ratings that they are, the bullshits, mm -hmm. the 30%s, <laughs> the fuck yous, because of that last 30 minutes. The last 30 minutes of this movie is horrible. Fuck, not terrible. It is fucking horrible. I've never seen a movie fuck itself up. Oh, yeah. This is a miracle, <laughs> the way they fucked this movie up. It, it did remind you of Fantastic Four, the ending. Yeah, they Fantastic Four this shit. It wasn't that, that bad. No, it was that bad. <laughs> it is right up there with them four assholes. That shit is that bad. It, it is that bad. The reason why it's that bad, that, that goddamn Enchantress comes out again. She's delivering bad lines, and every time she talks, she starts locking and popping and doing some weird moves. That shit was hilarious. It was hilarious. <laughs> Yo, it, she was doing some weird shit, and I, and I have to say, I was wondering at that point, did David A. just, was he being fucked with by the studio so much, he just gave up? Yeah. He's he was like, all right, with I'm going to give y'all a fucking movie, all right, mm. <laughs> I'm going to fuck y'all all up with this. <laughs> and all that could have been taken care of, and it's nothing that y'all had to buy, it's nothing that you had to get the, 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 the rights to, you had it. You fucking had it in your own vault. You had a blueprint. That you could have simply gone off of. I don't even watch all this shit. And I knew about it. I thought I was waiting because I said, oh, I never said anything because I don't want to spoil it for anybody. But I said, you know why I'm looking forward to, to Suicide Squad? Because they're going to do the live action version of Batman Assault, Assault on, on Arkham. Arkham. Oh, yeah. That was the best. Joker stole a dirty bomb and hid it somewhere in Gotham. me where it is. If y'all have been not seen this, I finally watched this because people were telling me, man, if you love Batman and you love a dark Batman That's story, one of their best animated movies. Yeah, I went back and watched this again today. <laughs> yeah, and you had it right there. You had a perfectly good Suicide Squad movie. It would have taken care of everything. If y'all had simply come in, get rid of this goddamn Enchantress bitch, <laughs> made the Joker the main villain, uh -huh. put it in a confined place instead of on this fake-ass set that you call a city, you would have had, you had a perfectly good goddamn Suicide Suicide Squad movie and you fucked it up. How can you do that? I don't know. It's amazing to me. It's blowing my goddamn mind right now. I, DC, are y'all trying to fuck up on purpose? I'm begging you, please, 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 DC, get your shit together. I don't, I'm not, I'm not a Marvel bitch. I say it all the time. You think I'd be dressed up like this if I didn't love this shit? <laughs> I'm just asking you to make, you have fucking five years to make one decent fucking movie. You got shit you can copy. You got Marvel that you can copy. Quit rushing this shit. Get somebody who knows what they're doing and get your shit together and make one good film. Is it too late to reboot this shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah or man. too early. I don't know. There's this, this too much already spent on it. I mean, think about how much of this is a commercial for the Justice League movie. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah. And, it's in the Aquaman and the Flash and yeah. all the other movies that are coming out soon. As far as Justice League, which I was so excited about, yeah. I could give a fuck less now. I told you, man. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. I was going to give it I was going to give it a rental. Mm -hmm. But because y'all had a perfectly good movie there that you own and you fucked it up, this is bullshit, man. Mm -hmm. This is some straight up bullshit. Oh yes. I don't I thought I was going to come in and give it one of these right here. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all got to match your face. I'm <laughs> mad. <laughs> I'm angry. <laughs> you know, it's, I'm giving another. I'm giving the bullshit because that's the only way you gonna learn. Get your <laughs> shit together. <laughs> what you got to say? This movie's better than sex. <laughs> you son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. I'm gonna tell you why. You better stop this. This is not the time. What, 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 trolling what, shit. What, this what, is not the time. Let me Hey everyone, thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe to our channel and go over to our home, DoubleToasted.com, for more videos and live streams. And remember, stay toasted. I thought when they brought Will Smith in, especially after that line, you know, bitch, you know, you know, big, we get Will Smith sometimes, then we get Big Black Willie. <laughs> you know, big, big Willie style, you know, that's where we, he comes in and he has to add an extra layer of blackness to every character he plays. Yeah. <laughs> but I... Uh, I got to say, as it went on, as he became the character of Deadshot, when he came in, I was a little worried about him, but he's one of the best parts of the movie. I mean, not only does he add a humanity to his character because his character has a daughter. I love people complain about this. Oh, I don't, you know, he has a daughter. It's supposed to be a villain. He's softening him up. But that's the thing that makes him more of a complex character is that he is a villain. He kills people. 
but he tries to have what little humanity that, that he can with his daughter. And he might even be a decent guy, but he can't have it. Mm-hmm. Um, he might be a decent guy, but he kills people. But, he, but that's the <laughs> thing about it. You can tell like he's not truly, truly evil. He wants to turn a new leaf. He wants to take care of his daughter, but he'll never be able to have that. And it's cool seeing Will Smith play that role, to pl- actually come out and play a villain. Pleasure doing business with you, Angie. I was like, oh shit, the Fresh Prince actually shot somebody. I didn't think they were going to go through with it, man. I was like, well, like, he shot a rat. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, he shot a person. Yeah, I mean, we ain't spoiling nothing. He's the world's most deadly assassin. You can't have him be in no movie unless he takes somebody out. Oh, yeah, a couple people. Co- yeah, yeah. I mean, and I was like, oh shit, they actually let Will Smith do some villainous shit right here. The cool thing was with that is that all these people, most of them, they get these cool intros too. And his is one of the cooler ones that we see. You know, David Ayer who directed this, who uh, wrote one of my favorite movies, Training Day. Mm-hmm. And also, you know, every every movie that he directs got to have some street in it. And that's one of my problems with the movie, especially with these introductions of these characters. He's playing random rap music, some pop music. Sometimes he's playing old tunes. But you heard about the reshoots, people. <laughs> Out of all the heroes in this room, nobody saved my dog from walking out this door. <laughs> now, and there he goes again. No, no, they they go let him walk out again. Mojo, come here, man. It brings in the best elements of the of of the uh, of the heist film, of the mission movie, where they bring in all these different personalities to do something that's bigger and more dangerous than them. Mm-hmm. And it's also about how all these different personalities. And all these people with different skill sets are going to clash. You're right. Dirty Dozen all the way down to, you know, you got classics like the Dirty Dozen all the way down to something like B-movies, Escape from New York. Sure. Yeah. And where, where, does, the, where does the silliness come in? Well, it's, they're trying to put this in, you know, D.C. They're trying to make things as grounded as they can. You got the military telling these guys, hey, look, we just got you out of jail. Everybody get your gear and suit up. And so you got one girl who's got a package full of clown suits and, mm-hmm. and, a, and a crocodile man who's putting on a hoodie and shit. You know, it's – but the thing that keeps it cool is that – and, and uh, this guy's been getting a lot of slack from people. Joel Kinnaman right there. The mm-hmm. act, Ro- RoboCop. RoboCop. But he's the – like I said, he's the, uh, the good guy and the only real kind of human in the group or the guy that's not fucked up. With him mm. in there and, the, and, and then he's the one that kind of keeps these things sort of, uh, as I said, grounded and not – too silly and plus once these people start coming together things move fast and you just i I don't know about y'all but i just kind of go with it this is the deal you're going somewhere very bad to do something that'll get you killed but until that happens you're my problem so was that like a, a pep talk yeah it was pep talk grab what you need for a fight we're wheels up in 10. You might want to work on your team motivation thing. You heard of Phil Jackson? Yeah. He's like the gold standard. Okay? Triangle, bitch. Oh, here we go with these big Willyisms. <laughs> that's Will Smith. That's Deadshot. <laughs> Will Smith playing Deadshot, playing Will Smith. Mm-hmm. See, that's the thing about it. You know, we, I. <laughs> 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 Everybody <laughs> to the show, a very special super firm. Yeah, more for my henchmen. Yes, can't keep my grill in my mouth over here. Hey, everybody, welcome to the show. You couldn't tell. It's a very special. But I'm going to take this shit out after a while. Bro, bro. You always have to take it out. I know. I know, man. I'm why, to... why do you do this? I don't know, man. Because it, 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 it looks good. But it's not very practical. <laughs> you could have just brushed them. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know that's not happening. <laughs> you brush your teeth? No, I didn't. No, oh, people, hold on. Don't watch him inhale a little I foil and oh. die on air. No, I got Alzheimer's. <laughs> and, and, and just in case. My grill fell out. I brought some extra. <laughs> you should have just put it on the whole top, man. It'll stay in better. So I'm going to go ahead and not try to keep y'all waiting because y'all <coughs> have been waiting on this for a while. Because, you know, ever since Don't. July of two years ago, I've been waiting on it. Now, this is for all the people out there. If you're just tuning in and you're looking like, man, that costume ain't complete. Where that grill at? I tried. I, I got tinfoil. Mm. Even brought it with me just in case. I Martin knew it was going to fall out. Minor freak out. Mm-hmm. Look at what you put this shit Martin in. don't like to see me chew yeah, 10 man. Four. Uh, uh, mm, Martin. Mm, Martin. 
Mm, this is delicious. You want to try it? <laughs> <laughs> but I did. I, I did get the whole costume. The problem is when I try to talk, go, 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 go. I, like I, you know, because if, like, for example, I'm going to get this movie, fuck you, I'm going to fuck you, and this shit going to come out like this, so. <laughs> some of bullshit. This is some, some of bullshit. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, Mojo, no. <laughs> Mojo, be, you're going to be <laughs> shitting silver turds tonight. <laughs> Me is like, we hit the lotto, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Let's feed them gold. Next, <laughs> but I have been singing the praises of this. And I'm not gonna deny it. I said, Man, this is gonna be the movie. Fuck Batman and Superman. Mm-hmm. That squad, yep, them villains gonna mm-hmm. come in here and change the whole game, man. Yeah, and I we- said, Corey, why are you saying this? You don't even read Suicide Squad, you know nothing about them. I don't do that nerdy shit. I watch movies, man. You know, I don't need to read no comic book. Man. You know, they always change things anyway. I find that everything I need to know about comics through my movies, man. I need to read, look at pictures and shit. I and said, Corey. Deadpool is the last word in anti-heroes. How's this going to measure up to that? And I said, Martin, I don't give a shit. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but the word has come out. The movie has not been getting good reviews. And I, and, you know, I, I, and I still, I'm, and, I, and here's the other thing, too. I'm not going to lie. All week, I've been clicking. This is how much I've been looking forward to this movie. I've been clicking on the internet, just seeing if somebody would sneak a review out there. Mm-hmm. I want to find out about this movie so bad. Because I... Yeah, I don't, I don't know the Suicide Squad that well, but I know some of these villains, and I know that DC needs a big hit, and I know that they're looking for this to be the one that's so different from everything that they've done that I admire that enough that I want to succeed. I love the concept. You know, we got this hard-ass woman, Amanda Waller, played by Viola Davis. You know, she'll do anything to keep her country protected, including getting together a program called, what's it called? The Task, <coughs> Task, Task Force, Force X. Task Force X. What is that? That's where they got a bunch of villains. Not just regular villains, meta-humans. You know, they got special powers and abilities. And they're the most dangerous people in the world because of that. And she says, you know what, but when a big crisis happens, like let's say, you know, a, you know, a Superman comes down that ain't so nice. Kind of an asshole Superman. Mm-hmm. What are we going to do then? What are we going to what we going to do then? Look at she got black on everybody. What are we going to do now? <laughs> what you going to do now? <laughs> what you going to do now? I uh-huh, done told you. And she said, that's where we got to fight powers with powers. Mm-hmm. And she gets this team together to go in and try to solve a huge crisis that's taken over a city. And it's not just a regular crisis, not just a regular hostage situation. This time, something magical is going down. And this looks like a job for the Suicide Squad. Now, said no one. <laughs> said I. <laughs> and apparently other books. They've been saying this shit since 1959. Talk about, I don't know nothing about Suicide Squad. Well, thanks to Wikipedia. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to say this. These Wikipedia facts coming out right now. <laughs> <laughs> thanks to old my, my old friend Wiki. <laughs> you know, I found out a little something about the Suicide Squad. Then they do run deep. I didn't know this. I mean, I was, that's how much I love this movie. I said, I got to know everything about the Suicide Squad. And I might be wrong here, and I'm sure that my, my nerdy friend will correct me if that's the case. But I believe that the Suicide Squad goes all the way back to 1959, where they were in the, the, uh, the first issue of the, the Brave and the Bold, issue number 25. And that's when they had the character, you know, they got the, the only human of the Suicide Squad, uh, Cap- uh, no, Colonel Flag. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that back then, he wasn't hanging out with villains. He was just hanging out with his girlfriend, fighting monsters and right. dinosaurs and shit. Colonel Rick Flag. Colonel Rick Flag. And, you know, he did his thing. And then threats became so big that that's when they had to bring the supervillains in. And that didn't happen until 1987 in DC's Legends, number three. And it was a cool concept, too, because I learned that this is the, that, that is why you, the, the heroes are never in, I mean, I'm sorry, the villains, why they're never in jail, why they always escape, because Amanda Waller is always coming in and fucking up the program. She's always letting them, you know, get an early release if mm-hmm. they go and do some shit for her. She uses bell rev like a revolving door. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, exactly. Now, here's a, I, I, I'll tell you, it is silly. I know that. Uh, th- y'all, let that dog just, y'all let that dog just walk Mojo on that. Didn't nobody hallway. say a fucking word. That dog, that dog just. <laughs> I was like, excuse me, I'm leaving for a moment. <laughs> God damn, y'all a bunch of villains. Let my dog go out there to get killed and shit. Let him. He yeah. did that on his own. <laughs> yeah, 